Guess it's going to be real quick. I'm just sitting around, didn't have anything to do. Talking to my buddy Chris Wynn. He caught a great bass off Bussy Break. I thought it was the other day. Turns out it was a couple of weeks, several weeks ago. But 11, over 11 pounds this bass weighed. Great photograph. I know Chris is a good fisherman, so I want to talk with him about it. Very quick podcast. Doesn't take long at all, but we're going to mention our sponsors. Town of Farmerville, for all they do around the town of Farmerville, we got the mega ramp going in right now. Union Parish Tourism Commission, thank you guys so much for what you do around the parish to, to promote tourism. The uh, Marion State Bank, locally the best bank in North Louisiana. Can't say enough about the guys and gals out there at Marion State Bank. Discover Monroe West Monroe. Go check out their website. Go check out their Facebook page. Every Almost every day, they have a very good post about what's going on on their Facebook page in North Louisiana. You need to go check it out, specifically around the Monroe West Monroe area. And Janet Fortenberry State Farm, great people out there. Thank you so much. Chris Wynn is a good guy out of Monroe, Louisiana. I met him over at TP a couple of weeks. I ah, shoot, I say a couple of weeks ago, probably a, mu- uh, a couple of months ago, back, but maybe during hunting season, maybe just before hunting season. I was in there getting some stuff done. Met Chris, seen, had seen him on social media, and uh, made friends with him, and then got to follow him. Great fisherman, and he's not just a bass fisherman. Dude fishes for everything. So, this is somebody I don't think you will see the last of on this podcast. He got, a, like I say, got a real good story on this uh, 11 pound bass coming off Bussy Break. I hope you guys enjoy it. on their Facebook. The big fish come off Bussy Break. Uh, when did you catch that fish, Chris? Yesterday? No, I caught that fish actually back in February. You caught that fish in February? Yeah, And I you're did. just now posting it? I did. Look at yes, you. Sir. Boy, you secretive joker boy. Golly. <laughs> I know how you are, cuz. Yes, sir. We got Chris Wynn with us today. Chris, Um, so give me a little background on you. You from Monroe? Yeah, born and raised in Monroe. Been here all my life. Yeah, you now you uh have you always fished, Chris, or you just kind of started getting into that a little later in life? I got into it probably uh, around junior high, and then I just picked up and uh it just kind of exploded for me. I found that was my passion for the outdoors, is fishing and hunting. Born and raised in the country, you know, so that's right. Yeah, that's right. You are uh, now. You're not only a bass fisherman, as you can see, guys. This is uh, Chris wanted to do this. I just I saw the picture he put up there, and I'm sitting here at the house. I'm tw- I'm twiddling my thumbs, and uh, I said, "Hey, you want to talk?" And he's like, "Yeah, but I'm gonna be fishing by that time." And I'm like, "Okay, well, I'll catch you later." He said, "No, no, no, let's do it while I'm out on the water." And I'm like, That's "Okay, right. so I, hey, made for the most beautiful background, dude. That was a good idea, man." Yeah, it's, it's a nice scenery out here for sure. All the and it's a good day. Yeah, yeah, beautiful day. Yeah, yeah how's the far. wind out there? Is it? It's been blowing here all day. Yeah, it's blowing. You can see in the background, it's a little ripple. It's probably blowing somewhere five to eight miles per hour right now. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'll take this over twenty plus any day. You know, Bussy's been getting beat up pretty heavy. Um, and, I mean, for good reason, man. They got some some great fish in Bussy right now. But, uh, you know, there's something that doesn't get talked about a lot on Bussy. And I know you do this little bit of fishing, too, and that's crappie. You do any crappie right. fishing out there, Bussy? Uh, no, but lately when we're bass fishing, you know, we've been catching some crappie. I mean, some slabs. Uh, I caught one Sunday that weighed, I think, two, 210. And then my buddy shortly after that caught one right at two pounds. And they're hungry. They're eating, like I said, bass lures. Yeah, we were sitting, we were at the, uh, over at Darbon, we had a crappie tournament over there this weekend, I was emceeing, and um, I was talking to one of the guys, and he had been on Bussy, and he said, man, they're they're really, really active over there right now, so, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to fog folks to, to Bussy or anything, but if folks get tired right. of Darbon, get tired of other, hey, go give Bussy a shot, see what's over there, because it looks like it's going to be a good time. That's right, and like I said, you know, bring your own parking spot, because it is crowded. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that. I've never been to Bussy. Mm. T- tell me what what's the parking situation look like? What is it what's it about over there? So I usually go pretty early to try to beat the crowd. I usually don't. I'll be probably somewhere in seven, eight, ten in line. You know, I get there just to secure a parking spot. You know, not necessarily just to beat anybody, but secure a parking spot. And uh to within Daylight or just a little bit after daylight, man, you'll have 30, 40 trailers already parked and it progress as the day goes on. Yeah. So it's, it's crowded. I don't know how many trucks and trailers that parking lot can hold, 
but easily, you know, far 40, 50, but, you know, sometimes people park wherever and try to squeeze in. It'll hold more than that, I'm sure. Never counted, yeah. but it, it, it holds some, some trucks and trailers. So is it just one mm -hmm. launch right there? Yeah, just one launch. You can launch about two uh, two boats comfortably. Uh, you know, if, if everybody's lined up right, you can get three, but yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So let's... uh. Let's talk about your fish. I want to talk about your fish, and then we'll cover other stuff. First okay. off, that was probably one of the most beautiful pictures I've seen anybody take in our area in a while. So thank you for taking time to make sure that that picture was perfect. But, son, that was gorgeous. Was that? Did you edit that photograph at all? Be honest. Would you put a filter on it or anything I like did, that? I did have a filter, but I looked at the original photo. It wasn't too far off. I just I did it that way to just enhance the, the picture a little bit. But other than that, it's... The original picture is very close to that. Yeah, man, that was the markings on that fish. Of course, and it was a beautiful day. I mean, look, everything mm -hmm. about the the photograph was was really top shelf. But uh, right. who was who was did Lathan take that picture? He did, and he was actually my net man. He is my he's, net man. He's the best net man in the business, man. Oh, he is. He sure is. Uh, <laughs> he's been trying hard to catch a DD, and it's not from lack of time and effort. You know, we've been at it pretty hard. Uh, he came close. He caught several nines, but he said if it don't break one one zero, he don't count as a double digit. Um, but he he's trying. I'm trying to put him on one for sure. That's right. That's right, guys. We're talking about Lathan Shivers over at TP Outdoors, the bow guy. Uh, when you walk in, Lathan, he's about he's about big enough. He could hide behind a little sapling <laughs> tree. Little bitty fella. Yeah. He ain't big as nothing. But let me tell you something. That wealth of knowledge he's got when it comes to archery is uh, unparalleled. Good guy. And I'm glad to see he's out there with you, man. That's 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 how I met Chris. I was over there messing around with Lathan one day. Chris came mm -hmm. in. We got to shooting the bull. Next thing you know, I'm scoring a deer for him, and you know, done made a friendship. So that's I like to see that. Yes, sir. So, so look, the fish. Let me know how did that happen? What did you catch her on? Okay, so it was a uh, Sunday morning. I got there earlier than Lathan did. Uh, I pulled up to the spot. I was fishing. It looked it great. Um, by that time, I fished about 30 minutes, didn't get a bite. He called me. He's like, hey, I'm pulling him at the ramp. So I packed up and went back to the ramp to pick him up. And I told him, I was like, hey, I want to go back to that spot where I was just at. I said, we have a chance of catching a big fish and landing that fish. This is where it's going to happen. And sure enough, we were just filthing, and it's a crazy story. So it was a, uh, wasn't really brushing with a treetop, but it didn't look like it was showing much out of the water. And, I flipped first. I went to the left side. He was probably just five seconds behind me, but he wanted to flip on the right side. And so the bait went down, and I'm working it through the limb, and I felt her hit it. And I set the hook, and when I did, luckily she ran out. And that catch lasted about 30 seconds, and Layton had her in the net for me. Did you, well, again, did you, know, did you know right off the jump that it was a really big fish, or did you just know yeah, it was a good one? Yeah, I knew it was a big fish when I set the hook on her. Um, if you ever go to Busted, you'll know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's being at the right place at the right time and luck plays a big factor because of the thickness that we fish in. I mean, I can count, I don't know how many times where we flip in and set the hook and our line breaks or, you know, can't get the fish out. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. I mean, hooking one is, is okay, but getting her out of that nasty stuff is, is the next big step to do so like i said i just lucked up pitching there she ate it when she ate i set the hook she she had already was swimming out with it so now do you do you have a special setup you know for bussy as far as uh, line and whatnot like that yeah so my setup for bussy is uh g loomis nrx plus it's 894 i use a shimano metanium reel uh eight gear ratio with uh 20 pound fluorocarbon and biz x um using the owner flipping hook and I caught her on the uh, sweet beaver. Mm -hmm. yep, that's yeah, my setup. So Very that, much that line. Yeah, so. that enables you to get in that thick stuff and and not break off as as right. easily, right? Yeah, right, okay. right, right. Exactly. It's so you uh you fish bussy much? I do, I do. Like I said, we like to. We've been going just about every weekend, uh, hitting it pretty hard. Like I said, just to get him on a double duty. He never caught one. You know, we've been at it pretty pretty hard. So yeah, yeah. That's my second double digit that came out of Busty. The one I caught last year, she weighed uh it was I think ten thirty two or ten thirty four, mm -hmm. something like that. 
Yeah. And yeah. I think that's that's one uh, I had seen you on social media before. And uh, so when I saw you over at TP, I kind of knew who I was looking at. So I knew you were, uh, you know, you could get on the fish. But let me ask you this. Do you tournament fish at all? No. So I have, uh, I just bought a, a a bigger, you know, boat here just recently. I had a small, just a little 15-foot Stratus fiberglass. It didn't have a very big live well. So that kind of limited me to tournament fishing. But now since I got a, a bigger boat, I do want to get into it. But I have tournament fish before now. Yes. Yeah. But now yeah. it's like occasion where these guys fish this club tournaments every every month. So Okay. Yeah, I do want to get into it. What kind of new boat did you get? Uh, two thousand two uh, Ranger. Okay. All yeah, right. A little bit bigger, bigger. You ready wheel, now? Bigger motor. Yeah. Y- yeah. You ready now? Shoot, boy. Mm-hmm. Where else I you get asked that all that time though, like do I tournament fish and stuff, but I mean, I'm gonna try to get into it for sure. Do you uh you in the forward fi- forward facing sonar group yet, or you kind of holding out? Yeah. So let me tell you a story about that. A couple of years ago, you know, Brad uh, at Darbo Marine now. Yeah. They had a draw. You know, one of them like them fair like post deal. He had a uh, one of them going on, and I always do it because it doesn't cost anything. You just sharing their business, you know. And they put your name in the hat. They draw you for whatever prize they had. But this time they had a live scope bundle. So I shared this post, and like two weeks later, Brad went live, and he drawed my name, and I won me a live scope system. <laughs> Man, how about yeah. that? Do you uh, you like it? Oh, I love it. I love it. It changed the game, man. I, once you have it, once you fish with it, it, it it's everything. I mean, you can't go, can't go. Yeah, it. yeah. Well, I tell you, I, there's a lot of folks that uh, you know, they kind of poo-poo it a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, I fished with it. I fished without it. Uh, I can definitely see where if I'm going to be tournament fishing, it mm-hmm. makes that tournament fishing makes me and want to stay engaged a little bit more because uh, right. that mental aspect, man. If you're just throwing out there and you don't know what's out there, uh, I can wear on. I, I I don't I don't see how those tournament fishing do it, man. I I can't stay in it that long. Eight hours, these guys out there, and they may get five bites, and that may be yeah. all they get. Bring to the scales, it's something. Oh, it's tough. Like I said, we've been, me and Layton, we've been fishing on Sundays. We'll fish from sun up to sundown. You know, before the time change, we'll get what, eight, nine hours. Uh, just past Sunday, we was, we was fishing for, we was out there for like 12, 13 hours. So we do fish for long, long hours. Yeah. But we're looking for that one bite, and that one bite can change your life. You know? That's right. The show sure could. It could. Yeah. It could. You, where else you fish besides Bussy? Man, I'm everywhere. I'm I fish uh Provy Point, Darbone, uh Black Bay, just all the local lakes around here. I am chasing the fish. <laughs> that's right. Just I like know that's deer. right. Yeah, like them deer. I, they think you know, people think I would just hunt one public ground, but no, I I, I take them all over. Now you a public land guy, huh? Man, it's public land, yes sir. Yeah. And I'm archery. More yeah, you you you, you hunt a lot with archery, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that but deer so, you killed last year was a really nice archery kill off public land. I was glad to see it. That was on public land, and believe it or not, that was during a, a rifle hunt. Uh, you know, profile picture. You see, I had orange on. So, you know, it's people. You know, say this and that. Man, you're gonna regret not carrying that rifle. You see that big buck two hundred yards out. You know, that's that's my choice. You know, that's that's the weapon that I use. It's, it's a bow. That's right. That's right. Well, dude, look, I just wanted to get on here real quick and wrap, just talk with you, just throw something up on yeah. social media real quick, just to, you know, I ain't looking for no long podcast this time. I just want to talk with you about that fish. That was, un- that was a beautiful picture, man. I'm glad you, you got that out there for us. Appreciate it, man. Catch for a lifetime for sure. Absolutely. Did you, uh, did you frame that, fi- that picture? Did you blow it up and put it on anything? Put it in your office? I will. Or I will. I haven't yet, but I will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, dude. Well, uh, okay. I know Mr. Lathan, the best net man in the business, is about to come out there. Maybe you can catch you another one, and yeah, uh, y'all sure. get started. So, But I appreciate yes, you taking sir. time, man, and coming on uh-huh. here and talking to me real quick. No, thank you, Greg. Thanks for having me. Anytime. No problem, brother. No problem at all.